All right, guys, welcome back to Three Motorcycle Garage. Doing something a little bit different today. Uh, we're doing a short video, a short, and I mean short, five minute video, well, give or take, as to how I went about making a carbon fiber mudguard. So I know I've already done an episode on this, but no one really, not, not no one, but maybe not everyone has the time and dedication to sit and watch a 40 minute saga of me shouting and swearing and drinking beer in my garage. So. I've condensed this down quite a lot with my learnings on how I've made this this mudguard. Uh, so hopefully it's of help to some of you. Um, using Easy Composites kits, I'll put links down to everything that I describe in the video. However, yeah, I just I feel this content's good enough to, to share in a shortened version. So hopefully you enjoy it. Leave a comment, any questions you have, uh, and we'll catch up at the end of this video. Cheers. Okay, so I decided to make my carbon fiber mudguard out of an existing mudguard. That one looks a little bit battered because of issues throughout the process. But um, yeah, it didn't work initially trying to cast from the inside. So I made a mold taken from the outside. So here I'm putting some PVA release agent on. And then I'm mixing up this gloopy green stuff, which is essentially just a, a gel coat, a flow coat, which, which goes on to take the imprint of the... Um, the top of the mudguard so this is provided by easy composites it's just easy mixed up you put a couple of coats on um that hence the flow coat so it's you kind of fight it it was it was wanting to fall off just with the geometry but um we got there eventually i then shoved some uh, fiberglass on top of that uh, just to reinforce it and that left me with this mold um however the the, the surface still wasn't perfect um, so I spent a bit of time filling that with some dolphin glaze filler and then getting it back to a nice shine. Now it's important that this bit looks as good as possible um, purely because we're going to be, that's going to be taken as the, the first thing the carbon fibre sees. So here I'm just doing a final bit of prep with a bit more PVA agent before I put the carbon fibre in. Carbon fibre wise, I ordered a few rolls of this. initially bought a starter pack from Easy Composites but this is one of the I'll put the link in the description, but this is the first bit of carbon fibre that goes down. This is the one that gives you all the visual, so it's a really high quality, so this is the first bit that goes down. Um, just had to make sure to cut it all to size, not to waste too much, but also to make sure I had enough. Um, I then subsequently weighed that and made up some resin. A ratio of 1 to 1 for the, the weight to the resin is a good rule of thumb, maybe a little bit over for the resin. And then just start layering it up. This is a wet layup, like I mentioned in the start. so. Make sure your fibres are aligned and then just take your time laying it up. Um, what didn't help was the garage was quite cold uh, for, for curing, but I put three layers in total on um, and then a layer of peel ply on the top, which is this white stuff you can see, which, which just gives you a nicer surface finish on the inside. Um, this is quite difficult to get all flattened down. Uh, just try your best. For me, it was the underside of a mud guard, so I didn't give as much of a shit, to be honest. If it, if it wasn't perfect, but the outside had to be perfect, because that was the bit that was that was on display, obviously. So, uh, Because I'd done all that prep with removal, removal wasn't too difficult. Um, it looks pretty good, apart from a few blemishes. Uh, the, the blemishes are something we're going to go and sort out later on, which I'll show you how to do that. But there's a few little bits that, that just hadn't been... So then we're going to shaping. So I used a Dremel on its side with a little uh, sanding bit. And that was used just to give me a really nice uh, edge. But you've you got to be careful because it does take away quite quickly. Um, especially if it grabs or whatever. So that, that needed quite a fine touch to get it as uh, the nice curve that you need. It's obviously quite a long curve as well, the side of the mud guard. So I ended up smoothing it out with a permagrip block after that. Uh, but this bit was probably the longest part of the whole process. This took bloody ages to get it, to get it right. Um, for that, I'm quite pernickety with that kind of stuff, so that's why it took so long. But that is, it's worth doing it right, I guess. Here's I'm just I, I had a, an offset for what I wanted in terms of uh, shape, um, and then we we just cut the rough shape with a a diamond bit, diamond grit bit on my uh, cordless grinder. Here's some uh, powder coat and flash tape uh, that I'm using to make some dams for uh, the, the, the surface finish. We've got some XCR coating resin. Again, I'll put a link in the bottom. That's what we use to fill. I'm trying to figure out the ratios there. Um, use that to fill these little blemishes that I noticed. Uh, 
So we'll fill them, sand them down, and then we'll put a few final coats on of resin. So that's just me filling. You really need, don't need much at all. And this flash coat's quite, this flash tape's quite handy because it just peels right off and doesn't leave any uh, residue or anything behind it. It doesn't stick to the epoxy. So yeah, as you can see, well, let me cut that. So then this is a, we do a final couple of coats of uh, coating resin, which is just a really thin resin that goes on. And this is where the carbon fiber really starts to pop, uh, which is, Quite cool, cool process this bit, that was quite enjoyable. Um, did a couple of coats of that, tried not to drop it because it was a retard, but um, yeah, that's um, probably could have done with a better method of holding that. You can see already there's a few blemishes start to, to, to crop up, but that's something that we do, this is the final step. So we just work through the, the grit, so that's that permagrit block I was talking about, that's quite handy for giving you nice, getting rid of some of the excess resin that may have dripped off the side. Uh, after that, we just uh, work up the um, working up the grades from uh, 400 all the way up to I think it was 3,000 grit, um, 3,000 grit, and then I used a polishing compound, um, which again gave me a really nice surface finish. Uh, again, I could probably get I could go even I put some polish on as well, but you see the results; they speak for themselves. Um, I think I could probably go. A little bit more with a machine polisher if I wanted to, but I, I'm quite impressed. You could also do a, a coat of lacquer if you really wanted to as well, a little more of lacquer to bring out that pop. So there you go. So hopefully that video has given you a a flavour for making carbon fibre parts at home. It's 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 a bit tedious to be honest. I'm quite happy with it. The methodology I'm not very happy with, I guess, is the. Uh, the mold uh, using the outside of the, the original mud guard. I think there's probably a smarter way to do that. I've got a 3D printer, uh, so I've got some thoughts ticking over in the background. Uh, again, that all adds time and, and whatnot to the project, but for people looking to get parts made quickly, hopefully this this methodology is of use to you. Um, I'm, I'm happy with how it looks. I think you could get an even better look. You probably get a higher finish if you went right back and, and, and did that again. Uh, the final pass but um, see what I mean the importance of having everything lined up um, on that first layer because that, that is the bit that's, that's shown to everyone so like comment subscribe share with all your friends tell me I'm shit I don't really care any engagement is, is, is a boost so uh, cheers guys take it easy see you next time mm.